What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I've got another video for you guys today. Today's video, we are going to be talking a little bit about OBS, um, stream settings, record settings, and basically what you should be looking for and what you can do to improve your quality on Twitch. So I've been getting this question a lot recently because if you guys know the YouTuber Hutch, uh, he's been looking at improving his recording quality. Um, so I hit him up, I helped him out a little bit, and of course everybody's been hitting me up too, wanting to know what exactly we did to make his quality so good. So if you're one of those people, or maybe you just stumbled upon this video, uh, we'll go ahead and break it down for you. I'll tell you a little bit about um, what you should be streaming in and what you should be recording in. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and open up OBS Studio. If you're not already using Studio, please update. I mean it. I know some of you guys are over there on the old OBS because you don't want to change, you don't want to update. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Make the change, update it, uh, and then come back to this video. Uh, but we're going to be starting off on OBS Studio. Mine is going to be completely blank because this is a fresh instance of OBS just so I could show you guys how to do this. All right, let's go ahead and go up to File, Settings. And uh, if, if yours is all white and hard on the eyes and you want to switch it to the dark theme, uh, that's the first thing I did as soon as I installed it. Go ahead and do that. Uh, but we're going to go to Output. That's where we're going to be uh, messing with the majority of things here. We're going to go to Output. Uh, make sure you put yourself in Advanced. All right, the first thing that we're going to see is audio track. The really cool thing about OBS Studio is that it has multiple audio tracks that you can select for both streaming and recording, and you can separate your audio that way. So you can have music, notifications, um, your mic, whatever. You can have muted on your recordings or muted on your streaming. Depends on... Um, which way you're trying to go with that. So for me, I play a lot of music on my stream, so I prefer to have my music not show up on my recordings or my notifications. All that stuff is just completely gone. So for Encoder, we're going to go with X264. Never, never, never get off of that. Um, go ahead and click Enforce uh, Streaming Service Encoding Settings. Rescale Output. This is very, very, very important. I want you to listen. Do not stream on Twitch in 1080p. As much as somebody is going to tell you that 1080p looks better, it does not look better on Twitch because, let me tell you, because there are certain bit rates that you need in order to keep up with your, uh, your resolution and to keep up with your frame rate. So if we're doing like 1080p 60 or even 1080p 30, it just will not look good at the 3500 max bit rate that Twitch allows. If you're streaming somewhere like YouTube where, you know, they allow upwards of 10,000 bit rate, then, you know, you can experiment with 1080p 30 or 1080p 60, but just understand the higher the resolution and frame rate, the higher your bit rate needs to be. So at a cap of 3500, um, 720p 30 is going to look best, 720p 60 is going to look more fluid, but it's going to look a little bit more pixelated. Um, you can decide if you're going to use a custom buffer size or not, I guess it depends on how stable your internet is. Um, I don't currently use one. Um, keyframe interval is going to be 2. We're going to go ahead and use a CBR. Um, CPU preset, okay, so this is very dependent on your CPU. Um, default is very fast and that's going to look great. Um, if you have a really nice computer and you just can afford the extra CPU usage, you're going to want to go ahead and bump it down. Um, the slower it is, the more crisp it looks. Um, that's not going to make too much of a difference. Bitrate, honestly, is king here. Um, but very fast is going to look fine. If you have, you know, if you're on the struggle bus with a older CPU, you can switch up to super fast or ultra fast. But again, like I said, it's going to look really pixelated. So with the profile, we're going to go on main. Um, tune, we can just go ahead and leave that on none. I've never really messed around with that. So with X264 options, you're going to go ahead and type in open CL equals true. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up your GPU to help encode your stream. Um, you can, you can turn that on or you can just leave it. It doesn't really matter. Um, helps me on the, on the end of things because on my streaming PC, I have a really nice graphics card in there and I don't touch it. So, um, any little bit of help I can get, I use it. So let's go ahead and hop over to recording. Uh, we're going to leave it on standard. Um, set yourself a recording path that is not an SSD, um, just somewhere with extra file space. All right, with recording format, I usually go with MP4. Um, you can select whatever you want. FLV is more reliable because if it crashes midway through, you can still save it. Um, but MP4 is nice. You don't have to worry about conversions and stuff like that. Um, and I don't really have too many issues with crashing. Back to what I was saying about audio tracks. You can select as many audio tracks as you want if you set those up um, through the audio tab. All right, and down here with... Rescale output. You're going to want to put that on whatever your native res is. So for me, that is going to be 1920 by 1080. That's going to make your recording quality 1080p. Um, if you're looking to downscale to 720p, that's fine as well. Um, like I said, the higher that your resolution is going to be, the higher your bitrate needs to be. So rescale output, I prefer having 1080p 60fps videos. Um, so I just went ahead and did that. All right, for bitrate, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that on 1,000. Use custom buffer size 0. Um, if you don't have the bitrate option, I think some of the versions don't, um, you're going to select the pull down and click CRF. We're going to go down to keyframe interval and put that on 2. All right, so right down here is where things start to... All right, so right down here is where things start to get a little tricky. So we're going to uncheck uh, use CBR, or again, like I said, if you have the versions where it's just a pull down, just make sure it's on CRF. All right, so the CRF tab, that is where our quality is going to come from. So the lower this number, the higher the CPU, the higher the file size, and the higher the quality, right? So mine's at about 7. I selected that after messing around a little bit and uh, understanding what was good for my setup, what was good for um, my hard drive space, what was good for my CPU usage. So 7 is a pretty good sweet spot. I also have a 5960, so it just depends on you know what you're able to work with. I know you guys probably think I'm crazy with a 1,000 bitrate, but just listen. The CRF is basically going to push your computer to pull as much bitrate and keep the quality as high as possible as long as it can. So the lower the CRF, the harder it's going to push your computer. If you make the number higher, like a 15, 20, 25, um, you're going to get smaller file sizes, not as good of quality. So you can go ahead and mess with that and figure out what's good for you. Uh, the CPU preset doesn't matter as much as it did on the on the streaming tab. Ultra fast is what I use, which is just the fastest. Uh, profile, high. And then again, I have my 264 options on OpenCL equals true so that it can get a little bit extra help from the GPU. And now we can hop on over to audio. Audio, again, is going to be different for everyone. I don't want you guys to just copy and paste this because, like I said, it's going to be different for everyone. I have different tracks for every different audio input that I have. Um, the one that's going to be going out to the stream, you can just leave it on 196. 192, that's all that's gonna be utilized. Um, for your recording tracks, it's not a dumb idea to bump it up to 320 to just give yourself that extra audio quality. But other than that, that's pretty much gonna be it for the streaming and recording quality. I hope that I was able to help you guys out. Uh, like I said, it's really, really dependent on what CPU you have. I have uh, dedicated encoding PC, so uh, my settings are probably a little bit higher than what yours can be, but I hope that I was able to help. I know a lot of people just mess around with solely bitrate, and there's so much more than that. So. Um, I hope that you were able to learn something from this. If you did, feel free to leave a thumbs up. And I want to say thank you guys so very much for watching. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.